Today we're going to touch on resistant starches. They're often overlooked, and if you know me well, you'll know I love sharing knowledge about things that make a real difference to our bodies. They are a type of carbohydrates that behaves more like a fiber. Unlike regular starches, such as in potatoes or bread, which is broken down into glucose in your small intestine, resistant starch resists digestion. It passes into the large intestine mostly intact, where it becomes food for beneficial gut bacteria and is fermented into useful compounds. Resistant starch, abbreviated RS, refers to the portion of starch that escapes digestion in the small intestine and reaches the colon. In simple terms, it's starch that does not get converted into sugar in the upper gut, unlike normal starch. Instead, it acts similarly to dietary fiber by traveling to the colon intact and feeding our gut microbes without causing a big blood sugar spike. Scientists generally describe several types of resistant starch based on why they aren't digested. RS1, starch that is physically inaccessible to our enzymes, often trapped within the fibrous cell walls of foods, for example in whole grains, seeds or legumes. RS2, starch with a naturally resistant structure, found in certain raw foods like raw potato, green unripe banana or high amylose corn starch. The tight granular structure makes it hard for enzymes to break down. RS3, also called retrograded starch, this forms when starchy foods are cooked and then cooled. Cooling causes the starch to recrystallize into a form that resists digestion. For example, cooked and cooled rice, pasta or potatoes contain more RS3 than when they were hot. RS4, starches that have been chemically modified to resist digestion. These don't occur naturally. They are added to some processed foods to increase fiber content. How is resistant starch digested differently? In a normal diet, most starch is broken down by enzymes in the small intestine into glucose, which is then absorbed into the bloodstream. Resistant starch, however, is not digested in the small intestine at all. It reaches the large intestine intact. There. Our gut bacteria ferment it and produce short chain fatty acids like butyrate as byproducts. Butyrate, which I discussed in the previous video, is a particularly beneficial fatty acid that nourishes the colon lining and helps reduce inflammation in the gut. In fact, eating resistant starch significantly boosts butyrate production in the colon. This fermentation process is why resistant starch is so beneficial. Instead of turning into blood sugar, it turns into fuel for your gut microbes. Fermenting resistant starch also adds bulk to stool and tends to slightly acidify the colon thanks to those fatty acids, creating a healthy environment in your digestive tract. In essence, resistant starch passes through the upper digestive tract unused and then our gut flora digests it for us, yielding positive effects. One major benefit of resistant starch is better blood sugar control, because it isn't converted into glucose during digestion. Replacing regular carbs with resistant starch leads to a smaller post-meal rise in blood sugar. For example, a food made with high amylose resistant corn starch will have a lower glycemic impact than the same food made with ordinary starch. Human studies support this effect. A meta-analysis of controlled trials found that diets supplemented with resistant starch resulted in significantly lower fasting blood glucose levels and improved insulin sensitivity compared to diets with only digestible starch. In essence, adding resistant starch to meals helps keep blood sugar steadier and insulin levels lower which over time may lower the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Resistant starch also offers digestive health benefits. It functions as a prebiotic, feeding the friendly bacteria in your gut. As they ferment resistant starch, these microbes produce beneficial compounds like butyrate that support colon health. Indeed, studies show that eating more resistant starch increases beneficial bacteria in the colon and raises butyrate levels. Practically speaking, this translates to improved bowel function, 
Research has found that adding resistant starch tends to increase stool bulk and can lower the pH in the colon, making it slightly more acidic in a positive way. This can promote regularity and a healthy gut environment. In short, resistant starch helps create a thriving gut microbiome and supports comfortable digestion. Another area of interest is satiety, how full you feel after eating and related effects on weight. Resistant starch has fewer effective calories than regular starch since part of it isn't absorbed and adds bulk which might help curb appetite. Some studies indeed report that people feel more satisfied and eat less later when their meals include resistant starch. In one analysis, a daily dose of about 25-30 grams of resistant starch was linked to reduced appetite and food intake. There is also evidence of modest weight benefits. In one eight-week randomized trial, overweight adults who added a high amylose resistant starch supplement to their diet lost about 2.8 kilos, 6 pounds, more than those who had a placebo starch. However, not all studies find significant weight loss or reduced hunger with resistant starch, so it's not a magic solution on its own. Think of it as a helpful tool that, alongside a balanced diet and lifestyle, can aid in weight management by promoting fullness and reducing the calorie impact of meals. The health perks of resistant starch are impressive, and the great news is that it's easy to incorporate into your diet. Here are a couple of practical tips. Cook, then cool your carbs. When you cook starchy foods and let them cool down, some of the starch becomes resistant. This is RS3. For example, try cooked then chilled potatoes, potato salad, cooled rice or pasta in a salad or reheated later, or overnight oats. These cooled starches have more resistant starch than when eaten piping hot. Choose RS rich foods. Opt for foods naturally high in resistant starch. A slightly green banana is a great source of RS2. Beans, lentils and chickpeas are rich in resistant starch and fiber and include them in soups, salads or side dishes. Whole grains like oats, barley and brown rice also contain resistant starch, especially if not overcooked. Swapping out low-fiber refined carbs for these foods will boost your resistant starch intake. By making these simple swaps and additions, you can tap into the benefits of resistant starch, steadier blood sugars, a healthier gut and perhaps better appetite control. It's a small change in the kitchen that can lead to meaningful improvements in your health. Your body and your gut microbes will thank you for it.